Hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. Now I've got really good news and a little bit of bad news today, but let's just start with the good news. <laughs> Looks like I finally got some PED back in my account and there's an auction or notification in the top. So I'm hoping that means something on auction sold. Not that I got screwed in some way and not in a good way. Let's check. <laughs> Right, so we got another person asking to join as a friend, and I just got a call, so I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back everyone. I just had to eat breakfast quick. Man, well I'll get into that story in a bit. <laughs> Let my stomach settle before I, I tell it. Alright, so it looks like I have someone who asked if they could add me as a friend. Crankton Crayish. So yes, I will add him as a friend. Holy fuck! Big thank you to Melissa Queenbee. She bought my super adhesive. I don't know if she's a viewer or just a random person who happened to buy it, but thank god. So here I was showing that bonding liquid or refining trick with the yellow crystal. It actually worked. I was really worried there for a bit. I was thinking I did that whole video to show this awesome trick off and it's not gonna sell. <laughs> Alright, so it's sold. So that helps recover some of my losses from crafting the bonding liquid. No, it's getting my hopes up. Maybe I could just sell the... Oh no, I only have 10 ped left of it. Alright, that's really cool. I can't believe it. Yeah, big shout out to Melissa Queen Bee. She kicks ass. You're my new favorite viewer or random person? One or the other. <laughs> oh. No, thank God I can start going back to using my vaporizer today. Well, I probably shouldn't ease up on it, but yeah, I found out fucking finally what the hell was wrong with me. It's like I've never had food poisoning my whole life before, so I really didn't know what to expect. And I was thinking maybe it was the virus and not food poisoning because some of the weird symptoms I was getting. But it just goes to show you, I went to the medical, what is it, the MD thing online. That my doctor always recommends me to use before I come into the office to make sure I rule out anything that's obvious. Yeah, and then I was reading over the food poisoning symptoms. I was like, holy fuck, yeah, that is what I have. It's like the, the fucking body cramps, the fucking washroom problems, fever even was on there. So I kept thinking I had the virus. Yeah, and I kept thinking I had the virus because of the breathing issue. And then you know what it was? I was like thinking to myself, which lung is hurting, the left or right? I'm like, wait a minute, it is neither lung that's hurting, it's like more in the center. So then I looked it up and food poisoning will cause the top of your stomach to swell up and start crushing your diaphragm so that you can't get full breaths in it anymore. Sort of like the breathing through a tube sensation. So I was like, fuck, that's what it was because every time I quit eating like water fasting, all of a sudden the breathing problems went away. And then I realized anytime I drank alcohol or had milk or some sort of dairy product, fucking had to run straight to the washroom and my fucking stomach swelled to the point where I couldn't breathe. I was like, oh, fuck. So the good and bad news is I'm pretty sure I didn't have the virus. And the bad news is this is still pretty serious. <laughs> well, I'm at least happy I narrowed it down. Now, it was what really gave me the kicker yesterday was I noticed that anytime I had a beer or any alcohol, it got way worse. And then I looked it up and it's like, yeah, it's like breathing symptoms with the virus don't get worse when you have a beer. So what it was is the the beer and the alcohol was causing the fucking food poisoning, my stomach to fucking swell up bigger. So then every time I drank something, I fucking couldn't breathe again. So yeah, that's what was causing it. Thank God I fucking narrowed it down. At least I hope I did. <laughs> I still could be wrong about it, but I'm pretty sure after reading all the symptoms and stuff, like, and the main kicker is just before this all happened, I did eat a whole bunch of rotten food. And yeah, my friends are making fun, well, not making fun of me, they're just like saying, hey, make sure you don't fucking eat rotten food again. You know what happened was my house is just loaded with treats, like fucking chocolates, cakes, fucking donuts, whole fridge is this set, and the only real food we had in there was a jar of sauerkraut. I fucking opened the jar, and it just reeked like it was gone rotten. <laughs> and it had turned colors. And when I tasted it, it tasted fucking nasty. But I was like, either that or junk food. 
So I fucking ate the sauerkraut and a whole bunch of it. And then, yeah, what do you know? The next day is when all this started happening. So I was like, I should have put it together. Fuck, man. It was definitely food poisoning. But yeah, the, the main reason I was doubting the food poisoning thing, I've never had food poisoning my whole life. And I'm already 40. So I figured, hey, I'm pretty immune to food poisoning. Well, so much for that immunity. <laughs> I know people have been arguing with me about the virus immunity. Be like, hey, there you go, right? Should have listened. <laughs> immunity isn't always legit. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll make guys. <laughs> I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> oh, it is a little bit of a relief, though, to know I have a better idea of what was going wrong. Yeah, I started to realize it couldn't be my lungs that much because even when I was exercising, I wasn't really getting out of breath. It was just like, so if exercise wasn't making it worse, it probably wasn't the virus because everyone's like, hey, if you have the virus and you exercise, it makes it harder to breathe. Mine was just when I drank alcohol and ate food, it was getting harder to breathe. Oh, shit. I was just thinking, fuck, I shouldn't have just drank what I drank. It wasn't alcohol, but it was ginger ale. I'm thinking that carbonation wasn't helping my system either. If I don't want it to swell up, I shouldn't be drinking carbonation. Right, okay, switch to juice. Oh. No, so I tried uh, the food for curing food poisoning. They say you're supposed to eat a whole bunch of white rice. Well, not a whole bunch, but a reasonable. I've been so fucking hungry after fucking doing that water fast for two and a half days. No, yesterday I broke the water fast with, lo and behold, the foods where it says that you're not supposed to eat if you have food poisoning. So I loaded up on the dairy and eggs. Man, that caused my stomach to swell bad. <laughs> oh, when will I ever learn? <laughs> not likely. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on. God, I wanted to use my vaporizer and it's so full of fucking vapor oil, I can't get a hoot. I gotta turn the heat element on. No, I can't, because it'll be too loud for the stream. Holy... It's like, man, I couldn't blow or suck on it anymore. It was pulling all the vapor oil. Oh, fuck, right into the tube. Son of a... <laughs> man, there must be a fucking shitload of vapor oil in here. Oh, god damn it. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. That's what you get for drinking carbonated shit. Idiot. Yeah, it's the one side effect of my vaporizer device. It's as you're using it, it starts to produce lots and lots of, well, collects the cannabis vapor oil in a very pure form of oil. Fuck, man, is it ever a mess? If you get too much of it. Like, really, I should be cleaning this out regularly. But I have so much oil already, I didn't need it, so I was like, hey, I'll just leave it in the device for now. And it's actually built as an airless gas bubbler, so I can use the vapor oil as bong water if I want to. Which I think I'm probably one of the first people in history to ever use cannabis vapor oil as bong water. <laughs> I know people in forums have always debated over the years, what is the ultimate bong water? Some people use like ice and fucking, some people say they use vinegar. Now I can't use the vape too much because man, if my diaphragm swells up again. Mmm, better taste it. Alright, so let's get on to some more of the good news here. Yeah, the other good news is I've been sharing that Bitcoin link in some of my videos. And shit, man, some people signed up, like four people. 
And those people helped me out large. I noticed my Bitcoin just started skyrocketing, well, going up way faster than it was before. Because now I have other people helping. So I figured I'll give a, a quick shout out to those people and give you some of the more information I learned about Bitcoin. And just to relate how this is connected to Entropia, NeverDie has a plan to link uh, Bitcoins and everything to Entropia. I actually have some of the items already to do it on Rocktropia. So next time I'm there, I'll drop by my shop and show you the item. But for now, let's give you a quick view of it. And I loaded it up already, so wouldn't get the lag. All right, so each morning when you want to play the free Bitcoin spins, if it's not on the screen already, just hit free Bitcoin. And then you have to hit, I'm not a robot. And look, you can see I'm at 730. So let's see how much I go up by with this spin. 746. Yeah, I figure it's about 15. It goes up each time. And it's asking me if I want to play the high-low game. And I'll show you guys my trick to the high-low game. It can fail, so I'm hoping it doesn't. But remember how I was before I was complaining a lot, saying that I couldn't win at the high-low game? Everything's fucked in it now. What the hell is going on? I don't get it. Like last time I was here, this whole screen was different. God, as soon as I figured out how to use it, they changed everything. Right, well, I'll try it anyways. So what happens is, you see at the top here, you get a whole bunch of decimal points and then your numbers. Well, I'm just going to call these a dollar, like $746, even though that's not what it is, but just so I can describe it easier, because I can't think of a name to call it. Well, I guess I could call it Bitcoin, but anyway. <laughs> so what you do is down here, it says bet amount and it shows one dollar or one Bitcoin even though it's like a whole bunch of decimal points but just for the sake of it I'll call it one so when you have it at one you can see that my Bitcoins are at 746 so what I can do in this situation is use the Martingale betting strategy I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it it was this guy named Martingale and there was a challenge from Einstein here before I do it let's put on a little bit more Entropia content and holy shit, that rice cut right through me. I'll be right back. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Nah, I think I'm doing okay. Still not good, but man, a little bit better than yesterday. <laughs> <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry about all the belching. Oh, getting back into digested food. Excuse me. Alright, so yeah, to get back into the what I was getting... Oh, excuse me. Brr. Now, to get back into it, I'll cover what betting strategy I'm going to use for that high-low game. Alright, but today on the vape menu, my uncle was over yesterday, and he gave me some of his weed. And... I don't know what it is. My uncle gets weed that other people give to him. He doesn't know what kind it is. But man, is it ever good. I wish I knew what kind it was because I would try getting some seeds for it. Or maybe it's just a placebo effect. Getting weed that I don't know and it's different. I just assume it's way better. <laughs> now when I break it up, my uncle is very particular about what kind of weed he likes. It has to be the perfect dryness, like it can't be too dry. Because I noticed that, like some of my dad's friends used to tell me, so if you smoke weed that's too dry, that's what's making you cough. If you actually smoke weed that's the perfect dryness, like still a little bit dank, then you won't cough like near as much. <laughs> Watch, I'll hack my lungs after saying that. It's so sweet. It's like a million times sweeter and smoother than the, even the government stuff. Which maybe it did come from the government. I hope it did. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, that hits the spot. Now my whole body and nausea and aches and everything don't hurt as bad. 
Yeah, I think that's what's making my food poisoning worse, is when I cut out the vaporizer. Sure, it wasn't making my fucking diaphragm swell up as much, but man, the whole fucking body aches and pains. Like, I was reaching the point where I had a bad fever, my fucking muscle aches and spasms were so bad I could barely even walk. So it's like, it was very severe food poisoning. And now it's reached the point where I've got my strength back again. Even yesterday I was doing some work, but that was because I didn't eat for two days. So I was thinking that helped my fucking system recover. Yeah, and then I should have known when I ate this morning, bam, I got the fucking fever back right away. Or not this morning, yesterday morning. So hopefully this rice thing is going to work. Praying to God. The only thing, the reason I haven't gone to the hospital, like I mentioned before, I'm in Canada, so I have to wait in line the whole day. And they probably will just tell me to go home. That's what happens 99% of the time when you wait that long. You ask them for tests and they can just say no. That's why thousands of Canadians go to the States every year for medical care. Because there you can just say, hey doctor, here's the money for the test, do it. And then if the doctor won't, you just keep your money and go to the next doctor. <laughs> In Canada, you can't even do that. You only get your choice of the doctors they give you. You don't get to pick your doctors. So it could be some guy who doesn't even speak English. Well, I shouldn't make fun of people who can't speak English. Fuck, I can barely speak English and it's my only language. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so to get away from the hell stories, let's get back into the fucking Entropia shit. Help get my mind off of it. All right, so yeah, in Entropia, it's going to be linked to Bitcoin. Never Die actually had it linked at one point. I think the link's broken right now, but I'm pretty sure he might repair it because I still have the items to link it. Yeah, and then when that betting strategy comes up, it turned out in history, I can't remember how it went, but at one point, Einstein was at his peak of popularity, and they decided to get him to go to the casino to see if the genius Einstein could win at the casino. So I guess what happened, or I'm not even sure, well, it probably happened, is uh, Einstein lost a bunch of money and proved that he wasn't actually a genius when it came to gambling. And then they asked him, like, well, why did you lose? So then Einstein went on the record saying that no matter how smart you are or no how much you know about math, there's no way you could use that as to your advantage to win at the casino. He said the casino is just pure luck. Math could never help. So go figure, like, some guy took that as a challenge when he heard it. And, like, to paraphrase, that's roughly what Einstein said. I didn't get his wording exactly, I'm sure, right? So this guy was like, hey, man, I'm just a fucking basic person. Like, uh... I'm not a mathematic genius or anything, but he's like, that's borderline met, like, like the stupidest thing he's ever heard. And he's like, even basic math can beat the casino. So he went and proved it. And this guy, I think his name was Martingale, his fucking strategy. So yeah, how the Martingale strategy works is when you go to the casino, there's a trick. It's really up to the casino. If the casino has no limits, like there's no minimum bet and no maximum bet, then this trick will work. So this is actually the trick that caused casinos to put in the minimum and maximum. Because if they didn't have it, mathematically you could beat the casino every time. <laughs> so yeah, do you guys want to know the trick? Since this Bitcoin lottery doesn't have a minimum and maximum, or if they do, I'll have to check. But from what I can tell so far, they don't. So mathematically you can win every time. But there's a trick to the Martingale strategy, is you have to have a certain amount of payroll going in. And the richer you are, the better his strategy works. So like, say you have $100 and you go into the Martingale, you're going to have to make your first bet really small because your max bet is going to be limited by that $100. But say you walked in the casino and you had a million dollars, the fucking amount this trick works is almost foolproof. So what it is, is every time... Here, I'll show you. Hmm... Where is it? Oh yeah, there it is. Or did it? Yeah. So how the trick works is every time you place a bet at a casino, like say I'll make my bet times two right now, so I'm betting two of my 746. So when I bet, where's the high-low buttons? Oh, here it is. So bet, and see I lost. So this is where Martingale's strategy comes in. He's like, in order to get your bet back from the casino and still win that two that I bet, you have to double it. It's like the double or nothing strategy, right? And if you lose again, you have to double it. 
stuff. Oh, fuck. I was worried it wasn't going to work. No, but anyway, so eventually, if you keep doubling and doubling and doubling, every time you lose, eventually when you win, you get all your money back plus that two. So see how I'm up to 748. I'll do it again. So, oh yeah, so when you start this trick again, don't leave it at the high bet. Put it back down to your original low bet. Now, say you're starting with a really low payroll, like maybe 100 instead of 748 Bitcoin. Then what you would do is bring it down to 1. So that way, basically, every time you're doubling it, you can count it and see how many spins you get. So say you started at 1, that would give you 1 play. And then you have to double it, so that'd be 2, that'd be 2 plays. And then 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512. So you're approaching like uh, over 10 times in a row that you can keep doubling without going breaking your balance. But see, this Martingale trick gets expensive fast, right? Like there's people I bet you that are millionaires gone into the casino, tried the Martingale and fucking lost like 12 times in a row and lost shit loads of money. So this is one of those strategies. It's a very high risk, high reward strategy. Like, to be honest, I've used this Martingale trick on, on online casinos before. And the one time I used it, I fucking put in $100 and I came up with over 5000 within a few hours just by doing this strategy. Because you can see, once I've reached my payroll up to, say, like a 1000 of these Bitcoins, then I don't have to start as low as 2. I could, say, start at 4 because I have more steps before I go bankrupt, right? And there is another way to slow it down even like even one extra step, but it's not really worth it. It's just bet the same amount twice on the first spin. And then once you're doubling it, you'll just win your break even amount. But I like to do it where I actually win something because it's kind of annoying to do it without winning. All right, so if anyone wants to, oh yeah, and then there's also another good catch to this. People are like, oh shit, what happens if I fucking do this trick and I blow all my money and I waste all my Bitcoin? If you go up to here, click more, and go to rewards, they actually have points building up for every spin you make, or it says every 500 points that you gamble, 500, then you gain uh, some more points, and they keep adding up this total. So when you're doing the Martingale, and say I had like 10,000, and fuck, I'm just rifling through a lot of spins and breaking even each time, at least the fucking points are collecting in this. And then it's wild, once these things build up, you have to reach, I forget, it says down here how much. Yeah, if you want to encash it, it says you need 100,000 points. So you'd have to do this Martingale betting strategy, probably not that long to reach up 100,000 points. Especially, I know a lot of people might be saying, hey, this works so good, maybe I should just deposit and try it. That's fucking really risky, guys. I would only try this strategy with the free shit they give you. And fuck, if you can take this free Bitcoin and rake it up doing this high-risk move. Like, I remember when I was doing it on the online casinos, once my balance was, like, over 2000 that's when I started betting $10 a hand. So it's like every time I was playing, I would guaranteed to win 10 bucks. Unless I would lose 10 times in a row, then I'd go bankrupt. So I don't know, that's where this Martingale proved Einstein wrong. He's like, oh, Einstein, it's actually easy. If I have $10 million going to a casino, and they have, like, a, say, a dollar minimum, I could fucking play all day and guaranteed never to lose. Unless he fucking lost, like, I don't know. Someone could do the math on doubling it. How long does it take before you reach $10 million? Probably not that many spins, maybe like 20, but... Yeah, it's weird. There's that old, uh, another Chinese story or metaphor thing. Here, let's get a new mob. This one guy did like some big task for a king. And then the king's like, what would you rather have? Like a big bag of gold or something else? And uh, the farmer asked him, he's like, okay, well, if you're going to give me anything else, how about you give me a grain of rice doubled every time for their squares on a chessboard? So the king was like, okay, that doesn't sound like that much rice. <laughs> so he gave him that, and then after the king realized, he's like, holy shit, once you start doubling it each time, it fucking adds up quick. He ended up paying the guy way more than the gold was. Because <laughs> it was like infinite rice, basically. <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd mention the rice example, because that's what my diet is for the next few days. 
my, my aunt gave me an interesting trick. She's like, well, maybe when you're doing this, like she had food poisoning before, she added a bit of chicken broth, so at least the rice wasn't that plain. And you get a little bit more of your animal products you require. Oh, fuck, where am I running? Hmm. Yeah, so I hope everyone liked the, the Martingale betting strategy. I'm hoping some people try it on the Bitcoin thing, but fuck, guys, uh, like I was saying, don't get too upset. Only gamble what you can mentally afford to lose <laughs> and actual physically <laughs> now i'm kind of tempted to try it a little bit more you can tell my balance went up quite a bit because i was doing the martingale a bit last night i had some pretty close calls though i think i made it up to five or six losses in a row you can tell even there i was getting pretty close to getting nervous <laughs> Yeah, when I was doing that Martingale strategy, I think the highest bet I ever made with real currency was, uh, I think, over $1,000 in one bet. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, man, that <laughs> gets your adrenaline going. <laughs> yeah, and you want to hear the funniest part of that story about winning on the online casino? Guess what happened when I went to cash out? They're like, oh, sorry, sir, we had a maximum bet amount, and you went way over it, so it voided all your winnings. I was like, a max bet amount that the game didn't even warn me about when I was playing. And he's like, it's in the fine print when you sign up. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like me and my skimming over fine print was actually an issue even before I had my concussion. It just made it worse. I swear, it wasn't this bad. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do a little bit of, well, let's check the storage. Ooh, that's a decent amount of sweat. Now, I didn't get much sweating done yesterday, guys, because I fucking went outside and started moving the wood pile. Boy, moving that wood pile was good exercise. That's where I started to realize I probably didn't have the virus because, man, I've already gotten some of my strength back. I was lifting 100 pound fucking boulders like nothing. <laughs> Not quite 100 pounds, but. No, I shouldn't get greedy and go right between the T's. Let's do a little warm up and start with one tea. Give it some attention. <laughs> ah, fuck. Get my mind out of the gutter. I can't even do things. <laughs> yeah, so that's been my adventures lately. No, I've had some people, local people, on Facebook message and said they would help me build my freaking pool house. But I'm pretty sure I'm still going to get the building company to do the whole frame part of it. Like... That was just the estimate for the outside frame just because it's going to involve some high up ladder stuff and comes to insurance wise and getting sued I, i'm hoping the company is able to do it safely and then we'll do the the safer parts like i'd rather spend overspend like five thousand not get my fucking friend's ankles broken or something right now my one buddy was telling me a story about that him and his dad got loaded and went up on the roof to do some roofing on the garage to save money they didn't hire a roofer they're gonna do it themselves okay I think I better stop vaporizing that last hoot was a bit harsh <laughs> now you can imagine what happened when they're drinking and roofing fucking buddy was uh, his dad was climbing down the ladder i can't remember if he slipped or what it was but he fell a good portion of the way down but when he landed he fucking broke both his ankles and then once they fucking healed like he obviously went to the doctor for that but after he healed they were never the same he was like a cripple after it i was like holy can you imagine all he had to do is pay a few extra hundred bucks get a professional roofer to do it or maybe just not get drunk, <laughs> one or the other. Who knows, maybe he was uh, gonna fall either way and at least the booze helped reduce some of the pain. <laughs> I remember the Chinese farmer trying to be optimistic about everything. Right? <laughs> God, I use that Chinese farmer story so much. I had to use it for myself to save me some severe depression. <laughs> now, remember how I was bragging, I don't know, in the previous episodes? Uh, I invested a bunch of money and bought the CLDs and, and Tropia 
and they fucking went up in value and I was like, oh, it's so happy. I won like $10,000 or whatever. But I was like, shit. When I was checking the Bitcoin value today, like to do the, the Bitcoin lottery, did you see what Bitcoins are at? They're at fucking $15,000. So I think I calculated it out. If I would have taken that money and bought Bitcoin instead of investing in Entropia, like I did that day, the day that I did it, Bitcoins were like worth like a dollar a Bitcoin. So if I would have bought them, I would have been like, I think I, I calculated over to $10 million I'd have today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it. It's like, it was the Chinese farmer. I'm thinking like, maybe if I won that $10 million, I would have hooked up with some really smoking chick who would have cleaned me out anyways. And I probably would have got an STD. So I'd be like, now that this worked out this way, where I invested in Entropia, at least I didn't make a shitload of money, but it saved me in the long run. Some extra hassle. So that's how I'll try to look at it. <laughs> Like how many other people could say the same thing, right? Like if you would have invested in Bitcoin, you can't beat yourself up over it. But I started to realize that like so many times in my life, I was like one fucking hair away from like making it fucking rich. So I'm thinking if it's happened that many times already, it's probably, I just got to keep my eyes open and never give up hope. Right? <laughs> and try to think even if I don't make it rich, it actually could be saving me. <laughs> Right, let's go between the T's. I want to finish quick here. And finishing quick is my specialty. <laughs> Imagine I had 10 million and then I took that and invested in Tropia. I probably could have bought in Tropia. <laughs> Alright, welding wire. What a surprise. <laughs> Well, at least between the T's didn't let me down. I'll call that as my finishing move. <laughs> it's not quite a swirly, guys. I hope you guys are watching my channels for those. <laughs> no, who was it? One guy in my society told me a story about how he was crafting, I forget, like animal muscle oil prints or something. And uh, it was a relatively low value click. He's just doing it occasionally to use up some of his loot that he got from hunting. And it was on Christmas Day. And I think, what did he say? He looted like 40,000 with a huge Hall of Fame. I was like, holy shit, can you imagine? If, I, if that happens in one of my streams, I'll probably have a heart attack. So it's probably good that that never does. It's like, are you listening, Mind Dark? Never give me the Hall of Fame. It'll kill me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what the hell was I looking for? Oh, yeah, the teleporter. Sorry, guys. I'll try to get myself together here. <laughs> ah, there it is. All right, before I use the teleporter, let's get a quick message from my sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Man, I think that sponsor is a little out of it today. <laughs> no, I think my sponsor said he's going to be getting a haircut soon. So we'll, we'll see what kind of haircut he gets. Knowing my sponsor could be a little wild. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, like, what kind of haircut could he really get? It's not much to cut. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a reverse haircut. Uh, yeah, let's go and collect a little bit more sweat. I forgot to check. Did anyone else notice how much super adhesive I have left? Pretty sure yesterday when I was starting, it was around 9 or 10 peds left. Yeah, who knows? If this fucking Bitcoin thing, Martingale, doesn't clean out my account. Because, like, fuck, if I could build up that to a few thousand, that would go a long way for an income. Especially Canada just announced that they're cutting everyone off from their fucking uh, emergency, what is it, lockdown payments? They called our CERB. 
I think that's what's happening in the States, too. Wasn't it a lot of people are facing fucking poverty now because all that shit's run out? Like, I don't know, technically Canada is saying that you can still apply for the unemployment insurance thing, but our unemployment insurance usually is just temporary, too, so once that runs out, you're going to be fucked. I don't know they're talking about how they reopened all the businesses, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the businesses haven't fully rebounded. They're still going to be hiring less people. Now, and everyone who's for and against the lockdowns, I'm not really against either of those arguments. I'm pretty sure everything in life is a bit of a balancing act, and it's probably a little bit of both sides that are right about it. <laughs> Some cases, one side more than the other. <laughs> No, but really, each side always needs each other's opinions to make sure they're not overdoing it. <laughs> That's why I wonder if a lot of the things in our world are kind of fucked, because we've tried to make it all one-sided on the scale. We really cut off the fucking balance and pinions and all that shit. <laughs> I was actually listening to... The, the guy who does the conspiracy shows, they're not even allowed to mention his name. <laughs> Man, I haven't listened to his show in a while. It's so over the top. It's like he goes on about like the most wild things you could possibly imagine. And I was like, I kind of miss listening to him. I'm like, and then I can compare it to what I say and be like, Man, I better not be saying that or else I'm fucking too crazy. <laughs> so it's always have good to have that bad example out there. I don't know why in our society we're trying to hide all the bad examples. It's like, I don't think bad examples always convert people to doing the same thing they are. It's like most people watch my show and be like, okay, this is what I should not do. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys ever want advice in life, just watch my show and do the opposite. <laughs> I just gotta stop making fun of myself, sorry. I'm my own worst critic. You know, that really pisses me off is the day I invested in Tropia, I was actually listening to an advisor who's telling me to invest in, in Bitcoin. And I actually mocked and made fun of that investor. I was like, Bitcoin's never gonna go up that high. <laughs> So I think that was karma coming around on that one. <laughs> yeah, did anyone else almost invest in Bitcoin? Make my story seem a little bit not so bad. Please, someone tell me you almost invested a hundred thousand and, and decided not to. <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> Watch Raven Jade, it'll message and she'll be like, oh yeah, I invested in Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I invested in Entropia. Uh, at least I didn't lose in the Entropia investment. There was a little bit of gains. Or not if it, the tax department's listening. <laughs> it was actually a lot of losses. <laughs> Now, I tried to space out the withdrawals, right? And then I think technically in Canada, it counts as video game winnings as like winning the lottery. We don't pay tax on lottery, as far as I know. Hmm. Yeah, if anyone's ever watched the, the different shows about Einstein's history, I don't know, it's pretty wild. Like, I don't know, there was, I think, a few different TV shows where they've tried to do the history of Einstein and, like, hype him up to be a really nice guy and really smart guy. I'm not, like, saying that he wasn't either of those things, but he also had his other side of the coin. <laughs> if anyone's heard about the other side of the coin of Einstein, it's quite the interesting story. <laughs> now, I liked a lot about Einstein because I researched the same stuff, like Big Bangs, expansion, contraction theories, and... Yeah, I spend a lot of time like visiting, well not a lot, but yeah, actually a fair bit. Every day or at least once a week when I'm active, I always go by the 
the world's most advanced theoretical physics department, Stephen Hawking Center in Waterloo. So if anyone's stalking me, that's where you can find me. <laughs> no, I bike past it all the time because it's the main artery of where I have to go through my city. And I live close to it. It's a freaking nice trail. Actually, when I finish my, uh, what is it, my fucking place, uh, the pool house, it's going to have a view of the trail. I swear I'm not building it to watch the hot babes jog past every day. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but all, all my friends have already been saying, man, your patio is going to have a sick view. <laughs> it's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it doesn't hurt that the trail goes to the university. Yeah. <laughs> Now, that's what I was thinking one day, I always wanted to have like this fucking sick place with a nice view, so I'm really, really hoping forward to, well, hoping this project works. No, the view won't only have to the trail, it'll also be a view to a pond, and I'm hoping a beach and sand dunes. The city is actually currently renovating the spot, that it's just a pond now. There's a little bit of sand, but that whole place used to be natural sand dunes. So I'm hoping, like I messaged this city a few times and I told them about what it used to look like when I was a kid. All the rare species that used to live there. It's funny because no one at the city was alive or working from the city back when I was living there. So it's like almost all the records of it are gone. <laughs> so they're taking my advice. Now people make fun of the government in the city. But in my experience, every time I talk to the city, I'm like, hey guys, can I get help with something? Or there's something wrong in the city, can you help me fix it? They usually message back the next day and they're right on it. So that's why I kind of try to phase out of always just complaining about stuff. And it's like, hey, if I want something done, instead of complaining about it, why don't I just freaking get it done, right? <laughs> And the one time my whole neighborhood was complaining how the mosquitoes were so bad. I'm like, hey, what happens if I called the city and asked them to spray some stuff to kill mosquitoes? They fucking showed up the next day, killed all the mosquitoes for us. <laughs> I was like, fuck, man, the neighborhood had been bitching about that for weeks. <laughs> you know what happens is sometimes uh, too much of the stagnant water builds up in the storm drains. And then all of a sudden mosquitoes start breeding like crazy. So the city will come by with larvicide. And they spray it in the water and then it kills all the mos mosquito eggs. So then you only have like one day's left of mosquitoes and they all die. I kind of feel bad for doing it because I was like, shit, I just killed all the bats' food supply. There's like shit loads of bats that live in my area. So now I try to hold off. I'm like, I won't call the city unless the mosquitoes get like fucking off the hook. I guess technically you could just buy the larvicide, but I am pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. You shouldn't be allowed to do it because you'd probably be destroying the environment. Now, really, mosquitoes in my area only come out at certain times of day, like just before dawn or dusk and dawn. <clears throat> so all during the day, you won't see them. And really, bats only come out to feed at that time. So it sucks for them if they, you couldn't just deal with mosquitoes for a couple hours a day. You have to kill off their whole food supply. <laughs> Speaking of, fucking squirrels ate my entire pear tree. <laughs> Try not to hate on the squirrels because I'm sure they were hungry. But if they would have just waited a week, fucking pears had just started growing. So they could have had giant pears instead of these little fucking pieces of nothing. Alright, so tomorrow's episode, let's see, fuck, I'm probably not even going to finish Sweat, but I, at least I did sell that, so now I can say goodbye to Cyrene. I should say hi to everyone who's here, I've been too solo on lately. Now I'm thinking, now that I'm going to have a whole bunch of these fucking Sweat tokens coming in from Entropia Partners, using that fucking Bitcoin lottery I was just playing, so, once those sweat tokens are coming in, guess what that means? Someone's going to be a fucking buying sweat again. I don't know. I'm pretty sure once I start buying sweat for myself to sell on the fucking Entropia partners, 
then I'm going to buy a little bit excess and just start selling it to people who also need sweat. I don't know if I'm going to become back up to the 1M sweat dealer again, but... Yeah, I was thinking of that when I was advising the other guy what he should do. I didn't really come up with too many advice on what to do. I was thinking maybe another good thing to advise would be to find something new that no one else is doing. Like something I don't even know. It's weird in Entropia. I used to think that there was nothing that people hadn't discovered. And then I found so many cases. Oh, some people are responding. Hi and hey, howdy. So that's the cool thing about the sweat community, right? Even on Sirene, I could be going around making new friends. No problem. Well, yeah, that was the big news on uh, Pat, and Ian, Pat the NES Punk yesterday. The CU podcast. They were talking about Joe Rogan. And he had a guest talking about how video games are a waste of your life and that they're useless. And I was thinking Entropia is actually a good example of how it can be both. It's like in Entropia, if you spend the whole time just chasing globals and you really never make any other friends in the game, you always play solo. Say you're just sitting at home drinking alone the whole time, ignoring your family in real life while you do it. Well, that probably would be considered a waste of time, right? But you could also play Entropia and socialize a lot with the other players in the game. And it's weird when you're meeting these other players in the game, it tends to get you life opportunities. Like some of these players are going to have really cool jobs and they're going to be working at companies that are hiring. And you might be surprised how many people like network in this game, right? Like when you go to business school, that's one of the things they teach you. They're like one of the keys in business is being able to network with other businesses. They said that's one of the things that makes other businesses fail is when they don't network enough. So when business school, that's a lot of times what we would do is we would just go to parties with other business leaders or owners. It was wild too because they would organize them at like breweries and stuff. So you get a tour of the brewery then you get some beers in you and you're there with all the other business owners. And like one guy's like, hey, I make shirts. And the other guy's like, hey, I make business cards. And like, hey, I need shirts and business cards. So you start networking, right? It's fucking wild. So you can use Entropia and video games to, I think, either. I think Joe Rogan sometimes gets really one-sided on his opinions. Maybe he was just saying that to drive up the debate. <laughs> <coughs> Shit, losing my voice. No, I think it is. Every time I get emotional issues, it's like, maybe it's the weed, but it's, man, I can't control my emotions these days. I shouldn't say it's the weed, because I noticed my grandfather was the same way, and he wasn't into weed. So maybe I just inherited it. Well, actually, he was into weed until he found out it was illegal. <laughs> For a while, he thought it was legal when he was in Canada, so he was growing it and smoking it. Because everyone was, like, in the 70s, and it was popular. <laughs> Yeah, one year he even gave everyone an ounce in our family for Christmas. And then someone told him, they're like, hey, you really shouldn't do this. It's actually illegal. And as soon as he found out it was illegal, he's like, what? And he fucking never smoked it again. <laughs> Can you imagine that one day? It's like you found out you gave your whole family drugs that were illegal. <laughs> no, he was really mad at my dad because my dad didn't tell him. <laughs> It's like, how didn't you tell me this was illegal? <laughs> nah, sadly my grandpa's been dead for a while. <clears throat> I think he died in February a number of years ago. So that's I'm always very worried in February. Seems like that's always the month I know people died. So if you're ever planning plane trips in February, be careful. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, so what's everyone else's opinion on that? Do you think video games are a waste of your life? Is Entropia ruining you? <laughs> now some people would be like, hey, if someone sweats all day on the game, that's ruining your life. Like, well, what's better? Hunting and losing all your money? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be mean. That was a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> now I know some some of the sweating community is like a it's like a giant community in its own that has some hardcore players that have been sweating for years and known each other. 
give a shout out to some of my favorite sweaters. I have no idea how to pronounce their names. Uh, Gail Scorpion, she was a good one. Uh, Colwyn Awery, Al I'm not sure of how to say that. Uh, yeah, I'm forgetting so many. <laughs> Shire used to be a good sweater. I don't know if anyone knew Shire. She used to play all the time in the sweat circles. I think she got had kids and then she didn't have enough time for the game. Hopes that's what happened. Now they're part of the Jaguar Spirit Guild. Does anyone still know the Jaguar Spirit? I don't know if the guild's still active. Hmm. So far so good. That rice is sitting well. That was the one issue I was having. I kept getting short of breath when my fucking stomach would swell. I should have guessed it, eh? because it wasn't on either side. I was like, that's not my lungs, that's my fucking stomach. <laughs> it was so high up on my stomach, that's where the diaphragm or whatever is. So once it swelled there, I almost was thinking lungs, because I couldn't breathe. Well, I could still breathe, it was just significantly reduced. Like almost that straw feeling. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you if the whole virus in the world situation wasn't happening, I would have just assumed it was food poisoning right away. But because of all the fucking other shit going on, I was like paranoid it could have been that. Even though I hadn't gone anywhere. That was what every one of my family kept saying too. It's like, you're, you've are you been home the whole time. It's like, how would you have gotten the virus and no one else? <laughs> it's like the only time I ever went out was for the occasional work shift and the other one was for just looking after my uncle and that's at home so I really haven't gone anywhere and I don't go shopping so and I haven't been able to socialize with anyone and when we did in rare circumstances it was always the freaking six feet apart shit yeah but what would you think too if all of a sudden you couldn't breathe and you're fucking having a fever <laughs> it's like did I catch pneumonia <laughs> That was the thing too, because I look after my uncle and he has chronic pneumonia all the time. So I was like, shit, did I catch his chronic pneumonia? Could have been that too. Yeah, but thank God that I'm just able to keep the rice down to do. Yeah, hope all my fucking health issues haven't been the worst for everyone here. I figured I would just had to explain a little bit because I'm half out of it half the time. It's like even without the vaporizer. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting so into that Bitcoin and hoping that Never Die links it back to Entropia. Like shit, I almost want to try to get Never Die on the show one day. Although I'd be so nervous to talk to him. It's like he's reached God level status to me because I've been living in this universe that he created. <laughs> he is the creator. <laughs> he's not only the president, he's also the God. <laughs> no, I don't worship Never Die. I guess that doesn't make him a God. <clears throat> I do kind of envy some of his epic sales. That's always what I tried to model my shop sales after. I just kept thinking about Never Die. I'm like, man. Instead of hating on the guy, why don't I just try to imitate what he does and use him as a mentor? <laughs> it's like, buy low, sell high. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing I noticed too. Like, Never Die gets a lot of slack for what he does, but in the end, he gets a lot of shit done. So it's like, if you want to get shit done, you almost have to be anticipating you're going to piss some people off. Yeah, like that big investor guy from Entropy. Everyone's giving him a hard time for that strategy, but I'm like maybe he actually was someone who was just trying something really bold. And all those people that are fucking nagging on him are actually just that. <laughs> Same example. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if he was trying to scam everyone, he wouldn't be telling them that he's a Nigerian because a lot of scams have come from Nigeria. So when people hear that, they're like, shit. <laughs> and uh, pretty sure his thing said he was from Toronto so hey maybe we could hang out and party and play Entropia that'd be sick I've always wanted to party with other Entropiers in real life I even tried to get some of my friends and family into Entropia 
but everyone just quits the game. <sighs> now, I was always dreaming, like back in the day, we had networks of video games when I was a kid, so I was like, maybe I can get a network and hang out with other people that play Entropia. <laughs> Still looking. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh man, I love rice. Now that's what someone was telling me. It's like if I could pick any culture that I want to live in the world, just for the food alone, I would want to live in Asia. Not to be stereotyping them to eat rice or anything. <laughs> I think wild rice actually grows in North America too, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, no, but not just the rice, but the fucking all the food in, from Asia. I was trying some, like I, we have a huge Asian food market here, so I can get some food that's probably not in everyone's stores. I can go and buy like multiple varieties of dragon fruit. Well, I guess that's more common now. Or sugar apples. I don't know if anyone's tried one of those. So again, I never go on vacations to these tropical places, so I might as well just go to these Asian food market places and try to experience the food that I'll probably never see. <laughs> now those sugar apples are fucked. It's like a pear, except from like the tr Jurassic area. Looks like it has scales and fucking dinosaurs have been eating it. <laughs> and it's full of seeds. I was like, fuck, no wonder as we change the fruit. The way they are in the old form is fucking crazy. So primitive or... Well, I don't know, primitive or original fucking seeds. Like once you breed seeds out of a plant, they taste way better because you don't have to be picking seeds out all the time. Yeah, I should go back to that Asian food market. I wanted to do some vlogging there, but then I was like, shit, with this whole virus situation, I'm pretty sure they're paranoid of people filming in there now. No, and I was thinking I got to learn a little bit of Chinese, because almost all the employees only speak Chinese. It's wild too. We got a big university that has a big Chinese population, so they made this Asian food market like the size of a fucking huge Walmart. And it's just all foods from Asia. Almost none of the the products have English writing on them, so <laughs> it's a little confusing. But I feel very fortunate because like how how many people can say they can just go to places and have like exotic foods from all over the world just across the street. <laughs> Yeah, it's right next to that uh, Stephen Hawking Center, just like a block or two down the street from it. Now I'll do some vlogging, show off the city I live in, because I know a lot of people that are playing Entropia are from different countries, and, and travel videos are pretty cool for YouTubers to watch. Like, I like watching videos of what it's like in s the Philippines. It fucking looks sick there. So many beaches. Really nice ones, too. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm back. No, it's just my roommate asking if I needed any more rice from the store. So I had to make sure to tell her to grab some. Now I'm going to try a diet of rice and chicken broth for the next two days. Hopefully I can resolve all the stomach issues and not have to see the doctor. So keeping my fingers crossed, not to gross everyone out. <laughs> no, and let that be a lesson to you. If you're trying to eat rotten food, maybe you want to pass on it. <laughs> Don't try to be the, the big shot and fucking take on more than you can handle. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so I think that was everything for Entropia News talked quite a bit about never die maybe I'll finish off with what I plan to do tomorrow hopefully I'm gonna have enough time to collect enough sweat tonight and get the rest of the bonding liquid finished before I leave so that way I can put the whole stack of bonding liquid on auction and yeah I don't believe I have any more super adhesive to sell because it's sold the Zorn ingots on auction but if it doesn't sell Maybe it's fine and I'll just leave it on the auction and then when I get to Rocktropia, 
I'll import it. So if anyone needs Zorn on Rocktropia, yeah, that'll be a future episode coming up. I'll call it the shipping Zorn to <laughs> Rocktropia. <laughs> or maybe it will sell on the auction. I did put a very low minimum or a zero minimum, so there probably is a chance it's just going to sell. So that'll bring me back up to 306 ped once I get the Zorn sold, somewhere around there. And then once the bonding liquid sells, maybe that'll bring me closer to 400. Then I'll have to go to pick up all the stuff at. Oh yeah, the different 100 or 200 ped, I can't remember how much, that I left on Next Island. So that'll be bringing me back up to... Yeah, I'm going to be getting close to 800 once I pool everything together on Rocktropia. If anyone wants to help the show out and could buy some Mankinis, I can definitely lower the price now. Sales have been pretty much non-existent for them. But I imagine someone who's into coloring and stuff... They could probably add some pretty sick patterns to them. And so if anyone wants to help out with that. I think they're about 20 ped each. Or a markup. Like TT plus 20. Yeah I should check to see. I think I'm still carrying them. It's going to be how much does the female one cost? <laughs> Alright, still a little out of it today. <laughs> Holy shit, some people are selling them for 7 ped now. Fuck, I should have just sold them when they were worth 20, you know? Alright, well if anyone can help me out with TT plus 20 on them, that'd be pretty sick. But I guess I could be a little bit negotiable. You can tell that I like to haggle, that's why I put the price a little higher. If you're ever buying something for me, I don't get offended if you want to haggle. That's actually what I'm trying to encourage. <laughs> and I've seen all the travel videos in uh, East Asia, and yeah, I've seen a lot of fucking haggling there. I was like, man, that's probably my kind of place then, because I like haggling. Maybe it's just a social interaction. There's not really much social interaction. Here's the money. See ya. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, thanks everyone for watching the whole episode. Um, t yeah, I guess tomorrow hopefully I'll have that action finished where we'll finally be flying out of Cyrene. Although it is kind of nice to spend a week or two at a place. Really, I did travel pretty far to get here. It was an adventure. They gave me that really good loot when I first arrived. Yeah, and so what else? I got all the links below. The sex machine. It's only for guys. Ladies, sorry, but you can call me. I'll apologize <laughs> in person. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what else was there? The Patreon link. Well, I'm just going to get my guys sweating while I'm talking so I can collect more sweat. Yeah, the Patreon. I'm trying to remember each one to help my memory. I hope it doesn't irritate everyone. If I keep repeating it, it's like I'm trying to put it into my long-term memory. All right, so yeah, the Hido TV links. I got that one. And that one is like YouTube, you can get paid to watch it. And oh yeah, the Entropia Partners. I keep forgetting to mention Entropia Partners. Make sure you sign up for that. You can even sell sweat to them with sweat tokens for 1.5. They're official with the game, so you don't have to worry about getting your accounts banned or anything. And the only risk you run is if you run one of those VPN services, that's how you get kicked off Entropia Partners. So when you hear people saying bad things about Entropia Partners and they get kicked off, that's usually what happened. I'm not saying that happened every time, but at least a good portion of them. And what else is there? Oh yeah, be nice to Tia there. If you start bad-mouthing the moderator, I'm sure she's heard enough complaints that she has a short fuse for kicking people off. Especially how much she's raking in with doing all that. That's probably, like man, those Bitcoin things, if you add that to your websites and you start getting people doing the Martingale system, you can start getting potential to have like, I don't know how much it's going to be. I'll, I'll keep everyone updated to what mine totals because I already got four other people doing it. I'm pretty sure the more people that found out from watching this video on how to do the Martingale, like don't do it crazy guys with your own investments because it can fail. It is possible to 
to hit a loss 10 times in a row. It only works depending how big your payroll is too. So if you start off small, you might have to start at that one bet and work your way up before you get to two, then maybe a five bet. Fuck, when I was doing real money, I made it up to 20 bets at one point. That's when you start reaching thousands. It's fucking crazy shit. So yeah, I wish everyone good luck with that. Not just because you signed up under my referrals. <laughs> And yeah, I'll do a specific video on more information about Einstein, the Martingale system, and I'm going to start linking it at the end of the video so I get more people signing up to Bitcoin Lottery. And man, can you imagine Never Die gets it linked to fucking Entropia? I'm hopefully going to try to get Never Die on the show. It'll be a little awkward talking to a god, but or the creator. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Maybe it'll get me warmed up for going to Dreamer's Rock and talking to our creator. <laughs> No, nah, it's just an ancient legend that I'd like to research. All right, see you guys, and oh yeah, make sure. Oh yeah, I got the Patreon, and never forget. Never buy the products from my sponsor, because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. Subscribe if you haven't, and that'll help me. I'll appreciate it. I'll put a video, and YouTube's going to select it for you, so don't blame me. Oh yeah, and the t-shirts. <laughs>